In the midst of the 1950s space race, the United States and the Soviet Union were fiercely competing to be the first to reach the heavens. But while the US was focusing on the moon, the Soviet Union had their sights set on an even greater challenge, the hostile planet of Venus. And in 1981, the Soviet Union made history with the successful landing of Venera 13 on the scorching surface of the planet. But how did it survive the harsh conditions of Venus? Join us as we delve into the incredible survival of Venera 13 and uncover the secrets of one of the most daring missions in the history of space exploration. On October 30, 1981, Venera 13 was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a Proton rocket. The spacecraft included spectrometers, a drill and surface sampler, and a panoramic camera among its many equipment. The spacecraft entered Venus's atmosphere after a four-month trip and plunged through the clouds toward the planet's surface. Venera 13 then deployed a parachute, and for many, that's when its journey really began. On March 1, 1982, Venera 13 successfully landed down on a region of Venus's southern hemisphere known as a typical stretch of Venusian plains, according to the Lunar and Planetary Institute. Lava flows and tiny dome volcanoes are known to exist in the large region around the landing site, which may point to an active surface. According to a March 20, 1982 science news story, the Venera 13 landing site seemed smooth but fragmented, and covered around the lander itself by copious debris of all sizes. U.S. academics who examined the images hypothesized that the smooth patches may either be solid rock slabs or a crust of small particles bound together by atmospheric chemical activity. Such finds may be dust carried by the wind or may have been chemically eroded away from the underlying bedrock. If one were to assess Venera 13 by the norms of the period, it accomplished a lot of science in its two hours on the surface. Using its camera to take a panorama, it sent back eight black and white photos along with 14 color ones. The spacecraft's colored photographs are still often used in books, articles, and websites on Venus today. The images most depict the terrain in front with a small piece of sky visible in the corners. The lens cover and the spaceship are both visible at the bottom. Although Venus's surface seems yellow in certain images, scientists claim it is difficult to determine the planet's true hue because the clouds block off blue light. A portion of Venusian regolith, or dirt, was also collected by Venera 13 using a drilling arm, which was then examined with a sealed container. To learn more about the physical properties of the surface, the spacecraft monitored variables including the depth the drill reached and the speed of the drilling equipment. NASA reported that the findings demonstrated that the surface features match to compacted ash material such as volcanic tuff, rock. Venera 13 died due to the severe conditions of Venus after 127 minutes on the surface. Then, three additional Venera spacecraft were launched by the Soviet Union towards Venus. Five days after Venera 13 was launched, its twin, Venera 14, was likewise successful in reaching the surface. There, it lasted for 57 minutes. Later, between 1983 and 1984, Venera 15 and Venera 16 orbited Venus simultaneously and sent data. With the data sent to us by Venera spacecrafts, we understand that Venus, the second planet from the Sun, has an extremely harsh environment. Its atmosphere consists primarily of carbon dioxide with clouds of sulfuric acid, which traps heat and creates a greenhouse effect. The surface temperature of Venus is a scorching 450 degrees Celsius, making it the hottest planet in our solar system. Venera 13 faced significant challenges due to the harsh conditions on the planet. One of the major challenges faced by the spacecraft was the high temperature on the surface of Venus. Venera 13 was equipped with a heat-resistant ceramic coating and a cooling system to regulate its internal temperature, which helps withstand the heat. The corrosive atmosphere of Venus was also a major concern. The sulfuric acid clouds could have damaged the spacecraft's sensors and other equipment. To overcome this challenge, Venera 13 was fitted with a protective covering to guard against the harsh environment. 
The crushing atmospheric pressure on the surface of Venus was another obstacle for the spacecraft. The pressure is about 90 times greater than Earth's atmospheric pressure, making it difficult for the spacecraft to function. Due to its sturdy, durable design and its strong shell made with titanium zirconium, the spacecraft was able to resist and collect significant data that scientists are still analyzing today. The probe was also equipped with a cooling system to regulate its internal temperature and an atmospheric pressure gauge to measure the pressure on the surface of Venus. Additionally, the lander component of the probe was equipped with a soil-penetrating drill to study the subsurface geology of Venus. Dr. Xan Fomalaiti, a senior researcher and the director of the Laboratory on Photometry and Thermal Radiometry at the Russian Academy of Sciences Space Research Institute, also worked on the Venera missions in the 1970s and 1980s. The researcher described three objects that he believes have some characteristics of living organisms in the discussion paper that was published in the January issue of the journal, Astronomicheski Vestnik, Solar System Research. He re-examines panoramic pictures taken by the Soviet landing probe Venera 13's two cameras. V-13-1 and V-13-2 in an effort to detect any items or phenomena that could be connected to their presence, disappearance, or change in shape. Several reasonably big artifacts with sizes ranging from a decimeter to a half meter and strange morphologies were discovered. One of the strangest things during its landing was the fact that objects such as a disc, a black flap, and a scorpion were found. The disc was believed to be the two lens caps ejected by the lander. However, the other two items appear in some of the photos while they were missing in others. Does this mean that there is possibility of other life forms on Venus? For a concrete answer, we'll need to wait a little longer as NASA are planning to launch Da Vinci Plus in 2029 to study Venus more in depth. The goal will be to better understand Venus's origins and how it evolves. Per NASA scientists, the mission will also help us understand why Venus's atmosphere is different from Earth and even Mars, and if there was an early ocean on the planet, or any volcanic activity that could help us make sense of the data collected by Venera 13. After Da Vinci Plus, two more missions might take place. The Veritas, an orbiter planning to launch in 2031 by NASA and Envision, Another orbiter planned by the European Space Agency, most likely to launch in 2032. The Venera 13 mission was a crucial step in our understanding of Venus, which had previously been shrouded in mystery due to its thick cloud cover. Its success paved the way for these two future missions to the planet and our expanded knowledge of the solar system. Its contribution to our understanding of Venus has been vital in shaping our current views of the planet and its potential for supporting life. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, take care. Thank you for watching.